Hello everyone and welcome to the next HSE Sim tutorial. In this tutorial we will learn to use the elementar distribution unit operation model by making an example of a shaft furnace flow sheet. This tutorial is divided into two parts. In the first part we will go through the basics of the elementar distribution unit operation model definition and in the second part we will set the controls and also adjust the flow sheet. We will start by creating the elementar distribution unit and then drawing the streams. We will have three input streams, the magnetator, air and the coal feed. So we will rename the streams air and coal. We will also rename the unit to shaft furnace. Next we will insert the picture to the shaft furnace by right clicking the unit and then pressing insert image. From there we can search the shaft furnace image by writing shaft and we find it here. Press open and we get the shaft furnace image to the unit. After that we also need to insert the output streams, so we select the stream tool, draw to output streams and rename them. One is process gas and the second one is hematite pellets. Next we will start to define the model itself. So we double click to the unit to open up the unit editor and in the unit editor first we have the input sheet. In the input sheet we define the inputs for all the three input streams. We have some thermodynamical data for them and also we have some elemental data. We have the same for the output streams. And then we have a disk sheet where we define the unit operation itself. This is the most important sheet for the elementar distribution model. And then we have the control sheet. And then we have the model sheet, which is not used in this current version. The tools on the left here, I won't go into detail because they are not needed in this first example. So we start to define the unit with the inputs. Uh, first, we insert the magnetite ore feed amount. 100 tons per hour and we write the magnetite species here and put the percentages according to the analysis. Then next air and uh, in the example it doesn't say directly what is the needed air amount but it says that excess oxygen percentage should be 3% which means that most likely this will be controlled with the air feed so we don't know it exactly yet. We will know it later when we make the controls. So we just put some guess here. In the case you don't know the exact value, it is quite important to put some non-zero guess here so that when you define the disk sheet, you will have some actual elements coming from this input stream to the disk sheet and then you know how to distribute those element percentages. So I will insert the air species here and remember that the gaseous species are written with the G suffix in HSC 21 and uh, 79. And then for the coal, the same thing. We only know that the heat balance is controlled with the coal feed, so we don't know the exact amount. I will just guess one ton. 98 and two. Okay, now we have defined the input sheet and uh, next we will go to the output sheet. In the output sheet we will define the possible output species for each of these streams. However, we won't define the output percentages or the output amounts in this sheet that is calculated in the disk sheet 
and then though that data is transferred to the output sheet. So here what we have to do, we just write the possible species X is oxygen, X is nitrogen and then we change this uh, measurement unit to normal cubic meters and then for the hematite pellets okay we have some leftover magnetite and then hematite and then the silica okay so now we have defined the output sheet next we will go to the disk sheet and this disk sheet this is the heart of the unit operation. So in the disk sheet, we define how the input elements are distributed between the output streams and then inside the output streams between the output species. So in this case, all the input species that we insert into the system, the program breaks them into elements and then the new species are constructed using those elements. So that's the logic behind the disk sheet. So first we start with the distribution of uh, elements into the streams. The carbon element, it cannot go into the hematite pellet stream because there is no species that contains the carbon element here. Thus this is empty and I can only insert value over here. I know that all, everything goes here, so it's uh, the stream distribution is 100%. And the distribution type, I click this box and then select from these. I can select fixed now, which means that the program will always follow this fixed number, what the user has written here, or what will be alternatively adjusted by the controls. I can also use the rest option here, which makes this uh, the background change its color here. And now if I try to write something here, the program will tell me this kind of error message that I cannot edit the locked cells. Uh, it means that if I put rest here, the program will automatically put rest of the carbon element that is not going to other streams it will put here and uh, the good thing about using the rest option is that the this value is automatically adjusted if the other values of that same elements are adjusted somewhere else so if you can it's a good idea to use rest option. Next we will uh, make the distribution for the iron and it cannot go into this stream so everything goes here. I will just select rest so the program will automatically put the 100 here. Now for the nitrogen it cannot go to this stream everything has to go here. I will select rest here and uh, then this uh, silicone that's pretty easy too I will just put rest here but then for the oxygen now this is a little bit more tricky case uh, it can go either into this stream or into this stream and in this case I don't know yet exactly how the oxygen will be distributed between these two so I will I will leave it blank for a while I will come back to this when I have uh, adjusted the species distributions. So next uh, we have to tell the program which element defines these species amounts. We will define that element over here. And if we have a species that is defined only by one element, then the program automatically knows that that has to be the element that defines the species amount so it will automatically put this element in here and also set it as rest now for the carbon monoxide carbon dioxide i have two options i can either define it 
with the carbon or with the oxygen. In this case I write carbon for both of them and if I define that okay of this 100% 1% uh, goes to carbon monoxide, 99% goes to carbon dioxide. Then I can see that, okay, the balance for the carbon is now zero. We get some division by zero markers for the, for the oxygen. So to avoid these, I will just uh, make this rest and put some oxygen there so that the program can calculate some values here. Okay, so now the program will calculate how much oxygen, how much of this 100% of oxygen that is coming here, how much of it go, is needed in the carbon monoxide, which is set by this carbon distribution percentage, and how much is needed in the carbon dioxide, which is set by this percentage. Again, if I use uh, fixed here, I can adjust both of the values, but uh, I can set either of them as rest. So now this rest value follows whatever I write here. It is automatically calculated. So it is again a good idea to use rest value if it's possible. As you can see, for the same element, if I try to put two rest values, the program will tell that it shouldn't be used twice. So I will change this to fixed and put it back to 99. Next we will define the hematite pellet stream and we have three species here. And uh, first we will set the element that sets the species amount. So for the magnetite we will set iron, for the hematite also iron and uh, silicon for the silica okay and uh, we will set the silica to rest so it means now that of this 100% that comes here 100% is automatically assigned to the silica and then the oxygen amount is calculated automatically now we can do the same also for the magnetite and hematite. Let's say that okay, 99% of the iron that comes to this stream goes to the hematite and then the rest goes to the magnetite. So I'll write rest there. And now I can see that here I have these division by zero markers because I haven't defined any kind of distribution type for the oxygen. And in this case, that all these oxygen values are calculated by other element amounts. For example, in this case by the iron amounts and in here by the silica amount. In this case, we have the third option here, which is the float. Now, After we select the float, we can see that now we get some numbers here. So it this value is now calculated according to these values here. And now when we have the rest here, then this value is calculated by what's left of this. So as we can see, we now have some negative value over here and also some negative values in here. This doesn't necessarily mean that the distribution sheet is defined incorrectly. We can see from here that the element balance is zero for all the elements. So this means that the distribution is actually defined in, in the right way. But what does this, these values mean? It means that there is not enough of some element in the system to satisfy this kind of distribution sheet. So now clearly we don't have enough oxygen to satisfy this type of disk sheet that we defined. We can fix it by manually adjusting the air amount to the system and then checking back 
and we can see that now these values are reasonable. We can also see the current heat balance over here. So we can see that this current reaction is quite exothermic and the heat balance is not zero at the moment. If we go to the output sheet, we can see the current results according to the disk sheet. So we have some amounts here and also some output percentages for the species. This concludes the first part of the elemental distribution unit operation tutorial. In the next part we will take a look at the controls and also modify the flow sheet a little bit. Thank you for watching.